Hello everyone and welcome back to the EL111 coursebook. In this video, we're going to be going over the second part of Unit 3, Unit 3B, um, urbanization. Let's take a look. So first of all, it looks like we have a graph here. I want you guys to pause the video for a second and just try to understand what the graph is about, what's it talking about, what is going on in the graph, okay? So. I'm going to continue the video as if you've taken a pretty good idea. Here we have the urban and rural population of the world, 1950 to 2030, which is probably an estimate at that point because we are in 2024 as of the recording of this video. Anyways, um, we have three things that's being measured here. We have the total, total population of the world. We have um, the total urban population, and then the total rural population and how that trends, whether going up and down or stagnating. So let's look at um, A here. What trend does the graph show? So upon taking a closer look, um, here we have the population of people in billions. So this is 4 billion, 5 billion, 6 billion, etc. Um, the red line tells us the urban population and the blue line tells us the rural population. So what trend does it show? It shows that the population since 1950 went or has been steadily going up from 2.5 billion, steadily increasing as you guys can see. And as of 2020, it was around 7 billion people. And it is estimated that it'll be around, that's around 8 billion people by 2030. That's a lot of people. Anyways, um, for the red line, we see a steady increase that has not gone down for the urban population, basically um, people moving to cities to work and live and all of that. So that has been steadily going up from the uh, from the 1950s and as of right now it's still going up and it, and it is estimated to keep going the rural population went up a little bit but started to stagnate and then went downwards and if you guys can see at some point they both overlapped where the urban population that was once lower now became higher and the rural population that was once higher now became lower. Okay. And that is, by the way, the second question, what happened in 2010? In 2010, this is what exactly happened, that overlap that we just talked about. Where in the world is urban growth happening uh, fastest and slowest? And why do you think urban growth is happening faster in these places? Um, okay, so if I had to guess, let's go down here so that we look at the world map. Here we have growth rate. So if it's green, it's less than 1%. If it's yellow, it's 1% to 3%. If it's orange, it's 3 to 5%. And then if red is 5 plus. So at the first look, or upon first glance, we see that growth is happening fastest at around, I would say, somewhere between this is West Europe, so somewhere along there. And slowest growth would be up north, right here. Um, alongside, of course, other, other places, but we're talking about general trends. Um, so this is 500 to 750,000, and then 750 to, uh, uh, to 100,000. Um, one to five million, five to 10 million, 10 million or more. Okay, uh, what did I want to do? Let's listen to exercise two. Give it a second. Here we go. Here we have that same graph. And let's check our answers. So before we do that, again, listen, we're going to be going over the graph. Let's see our answers. The graph shows several things. First, we can see how the total population of the world has risen from 2.5 billion to over 7 billion today. Then we can see how the world's rural population, those people living in the countryside, 
has slowed down and is now actually decreasing, while the urban population has risen and continues to rise. In 2010, for the first time, there were more people living in towns and cities than in rural areas. The map shows the speed at which urbanisation occurred at the beginning of this century. As you can see, urbanisation is happening fastest in parts of Africa and Asia, rather slower in the rest of the world, and much slower in most of Europe. And there is an explanation for this, of course. In developed countries such as those in Western Europe, the majority of urbanisation has already happened. It was at its highest in the 19th and 20th centuries, whereas in developing countries, the process is still happening. Okay, so my answers were mostly correct, but I got a few things mixed up. I hope yours were better than mine. Um, the one main thing that I'd like to highlight is why do we think urban growth is happening faster in um, these particular places? And that is because urbanization um, in places where the growth rate um, is not that much is because it's already happened. So we're talking about urban growth that is happening to countries that are developing and not yet fully developed. Okay. So that was exercise two. Um, discuss the reasons for urban growth around the world and make a list of your ideas. I'd like you to pause the video here and discuss some reasons with yourself or if you have a partner, talk about why does growth happen or why does urban growth happen around the world? What are the causes for it? What makes a person decide to um, leave a rural area and move to an urban area to work and live? I'll start. I'll say there's some interesting ideas, one being obviously to find a job or work. There's more chances of work at an urban area than a rural one. Um, better business, so perhaps higher wages as well. Um, you'll just make more money. Um, probably better housing as well. Um, so these are all ideas that contribute to the, they're not the only ones, but they're a major contributor in urban growth. Now, let's go to exercise four. Listen to part of a lecture about urbanization. Does the lecturer give the same reasons as you for urban growth? Okay, so you have your reasons, I have mine, they might overlap. We're gonna listen to this lecture. We're gonna listen to it twice. First, to see what the lecture is all about and how things are being said, and then afterwards well i'll tell you afterwards when we get there all right here we go so what causes urbanization we can separate the causes of this migration into push factors and pull factors that is things that push people away from rural areas like low wages or a lack of jobs or natural disasters such as floods or droughts which can cause starvation People are forced out of rural areas by these factors. Then there are things that pull people towards towns and cities. Yes, I'm talking about more jobs and higher wages. But there are also the amenities in urban areas such as schools, hospitals and so on. In general, people are attracted to the cities by a better quality of life. OK, so... Now that we've listened to it once, got a general idea, I want you to listen one more time, but focus on some key differences and similarities between your lists and the one being uh, said by or in the lecture. OK, here we go. So what causes urbanization? We can separate the causes of this migration into push factors and pull factors, that is, Things that push people away from rural areas, like low wages or a lack of jobs, or natural disasters, such as floods or droughts, which can cause starvation. People are forced out of rural areas by these factors. Then there are things that pull people towards towns and cities. Yes, I'm talking about more jobs and higher wages. But there are also the amenities in urban areas, such as schools, hospitals and so on. In general, 
people are attracted to the cities by a better quality of life. Okay, so based on the lecture, we know that people are attracted to cities and the urban life due to a better quality of life. And he mentioned the higher wages that I talked about and better employment. But some things that I did not mention were perhaps floods and things that can cause starvation, lack of jobs. All of these force people or rather pull people out of a rural environment, even if they don't want to. Okay. Also the amenities. It's no secret that cities have much better amenities. You have more schools, more hospitals, perhaps training facilities. There's just more to do. Okay. So this is why this is what majorly contributes to urban growth. Now let's go to exercise five. Let's see. Listen to the next part of the lecture and complete the table. Do you agree with the lecture? Can you add any more points? Okay. What I'm what I want you guys to do is take out your pen and paper. Um, make a similar table to this or just write each one. And I want you to list some of the benefits, drawbacks, and then benefits for urban and drawbacks for urban as well. Um, based on the lecture. So you're going to be listening for specific details, okay? Benefits, benefits and drawbacks for each rural and urban. All right, here we go. There are, of course, multiple problems in cities caused by the migration of people from rural areas, perhaps the most obvious being unemployment. Some people are offered manual jobs, for example, in the building trade. However, some people are not given work because they do not have the right skills or are too old. And then there is the problem of housing the ever-increasing population. About 40% of urban expansion is estimated to be taking place in slums, and the unsanitary conditions in these slums mean that diseases spread easily. All of these issues are especially problematic when the process of urbanisation happens quickly. Cities can grow so fast that the infrastructure cannot cope with the increasing population. Therefore, there isn't enough quality housing and there aren't enough schools or hospitals. However, cities can really benefit from this influx of people. People bring with them new ideas and the exchange of ideas in cities helps development. On a practical level, there is more business and consequently more jobs are created. Studies show that the bigger the city, the higher the average wage of its citizens. But how are rural areas affected by urbanisation? Clearly, there are challenges. With so many people leaving the countryside, the workforce can be severely reduced. This is particularly difficult when young men are migrating because traditionally, in rural areas, the more physical jobs were carried out by these young men. A subsequent problem is that often these jobs will have to be done by the children in the families who would otherwise be going to school. However, the benefits that urbanisation brings to rural areas should not be ignored. The migrant workers in the cities earn significantly more than they were making at home and they send a lot of this money back to their families. This money will be spent in the rural communities. Animals are bought and school fees are paid. In addition to helping their families financially, when these workers return to their villages, they often bring with them new knowledge and skills that can be used to benefit the local area. All right, so I hope you guys were able to find at least one detail for each part. Um, I'll show you mine here. I had these pre-written. Um, for rural benefits, I wrote that migrant workers send money back to rural areas, which can then be spent um, and basically it'll be spent in those rural areas leading to a better economy uh, better quality of life etc and also once these workers decide to stop living in an urban city and come back they bring with them a lot of knowledge and expertise i mean if you've lived in a city after living in a rural area for a long time 
you know that with traveling comes knowledge and also because of job experience and all of that you'll be much more knowledgeable uh, and with more expertise of course which will greatly benefit the rural area that you're going to let's talk about rural drawbacks um, again reduced workforce you simply don't have the same employment options as you do in a city and because young men are often the ones that tend to immigrate or move to cities the most children would now have to do the work instead of going to school because traditionally the hard manual labor work would have been done by young men but now children have to take up that mantle instead of going to something like school and getting a better education for urban benefits i wrote simply more business i mean you have higher populations more people which means more business right and more business more people again means higher wages higher quality of life okay uh for drawbacks i would say housing and unemployment sometimes uh like it was mentioned in the lecture the city grows faster than the infrastructure can handle or the infrastructure can't keep up which causes problems and among these problems is housing you simply do not have enough housing or good quality housing for everyone that keeps moving so quickly to the city another one is unemployment not everyone has the skills needed to work um, the jobs that are needed in an urban environment i mean believe it or not yes there's a lot of jobs but you still need to have skills to get these jobs and if you don't have these required skills well <laughs> you know what i mean like the you can't you face unemployment, which is uh, that it, that's a whole different problem. So these were some of the drawbacks. Um, I'll just go to number six, listen and complete these sentences from the lecture. Let me reset this. Again, since this is a shorter audio, I'll play this once. So you can listen to the um, sentences and then i'll play it again once more so that you can focus on very specific details on what to fill in these blanks okay so here we go a some people are offered manual jobs for example in the building trade b on a practical level there is more business and consequently more jobs are created c but how are rural areas affected by urbanization? D. With so many people leaving the countryside, the workforce can be severely reduced. E. Traditionally, in rural areas, the more physical jobs were carried out by these young men. F. This money will be spent in the rural communities. All right. Now, I'll play it one more time. Try to fill in these blanks as we go, okay? A. Some people are offered manual jobs, for example, in the building trade. B. On a practical level, there is more business and consequently more jobs are created. C. But how are rural areas affected by urbanization? D. With so many people leaving the countryside, the workforce can be severely reduced. E. Traditionally, in rural areas, the more physical jobs were carried out by these young men. F. This money will be spent in the rural communities. All right, so let's go over these together. Compare your answers with me. Um, a, some people dash manual jobs, for example, in the building trades. We'll say some people are offered manual jobs. Um, B, on a practical level, there is more business and consequently more jobs are created. That is correct. Good job. Um, C, but how dash rural areas dash by urbanization? We'll say, but how are oh, rural areas affected by urbanization d with so many people leaving the countryside the workforce uh 
it would it was can be severely reduced. Can be severely reduced. Okay. Traditionally, in rural areas, the more physical jobs dashed by these young men were carried out by these young men. F this money dash in the rural communities will be spent in the rural communities. Okay, so this was exercise six. Now let's move on. Before we move on to the next exercise, uh, let's talk about this focus here grammar passives. We use the active form of the verb to focus attention on the subject. So if I say something in active, my brother bought a car last week, Sarah passed her exam, my main focus in that sentence is the subject. However, on the other side of the coin, we use the passive form of the verb to focus on the person or thing that is the object of action. For example, I'll use be and past participle. And then I'll use the passive when three main points are found something that is not important. So the president was driven to the airport this morning. Do we really care who the driver was? It doesn't matter. The main focus was the president. So the president was driven to the airport this morning. Something that is obvious, you're going to be arrested. I mean, I don't see a chef arresting people. So if it's obvious, it's probably the police, only the police arresting people. So if it's something that is unimportant, obvious, uh, or unknown. The house was burgled last week. This is simply unknown. We don't know who committed the burglary. So if I say the house was burgled last week, that is impassive. We use by to say who performed said action. For example, my car is being fixed by my neighbor. Okay, the car is being fixed by my neighbor. I don't say my neighbor fixed my car, the car is being fixed by my neighbor, my focus is not on the subject anymore. Okay. Now, this will make more sense as we go through exercise seven. So don't worry if you don't get all of it just yet. Let's go to exercise seven. Reset this. Here we have. Um, here we have some verbs, and we're going to be using the correct form together as we go. So Let's take a look at a more money we have will and invest in rural communities. Remember you guys, I want to use B. So I'll say, will be, and then I have to put invest in the past. So invested, Oh, that is not correct. Invested in rural communities. So more money will be invested in rural communities. Recently, more police we have B send to the problem areas of cities. That is correct. Good job. Have been sent to the problem areas of cities. C clean water we have should and provide to the residents of the slums. Clean water should and again B and then add an ED provided to the residents of the slums. D, try to do these before I say them. Uh, it's a good exercise. All children in the city can give injections to protect them from diseases. So can will become could, and then B, and then ED. It'd be given injections to protect them from diseases. E, everyone we have should educate about the effects of pollution. Should will remain the same, just like could in the example above. B, and then ED. There you go. Should be educated about the effects of pollution. F, in the future, new schools, we have B, build in small towns and villages. Again, if it's B, we'll be add will, will be, and then build will be in the past. We cannot add ED to build, so I can't say builded. 
I just say built. New, school, new schools will be built in small towns and villages. Okay, so this was exercise seven. Let's do one more exercise on the um, active and passive just so that it really sticks. Um, I remember there being one more. Right, before we do that, let's take a look at the pronunciation and then we'll move on to another one. Um, give it a second. Okay, here we have, this is basically a quick pronunciation and we wanna underline the word that has a different O sound. So you guys have to remember sometimes a word might have the same letter or alphabet, but it sounds different. Now, I want you to listen to each of these rows and try to differentiate the O that sounds different in each word, okay? Two will sound similar and one will sound different. So let's listen together. A. Job. No. Cost. B. Town. Provide Pollution C Money Everyone Police Okay. For A, it says job, no, and cost. No is the one that sounds different. B, town, provide and pollution you notice here how town the o sounds very different it sounds like an owl so it will be town and then c money everyone and police uh this one's a little confusing everyone i believe okay this one's wrong so let's try this again money everyone and police I would say police. There you go. So money and everyone are the same, uh, have the same pronunciation. Police is O sounds a little bit different. It even fooled me. So that's okay. <laughs> um, what else do we have? Let's go to the next page. Okay. Here we have two uh, we have two different solutions that have been caused by urbanization. What I would like you to do is pause the video for a minute, take a quick look at both Sweden and Chile, and just to get a general idea of what the text is talking about, and then come back to the video. Okay, so now I'm going to go go normally as if you've read this once already. Now that we have a good idea of what this is talking about, let's, let's listen, let's read it again. But this time, I want you to focus on both solutions. And tell me which one do you prefer? And why? Okay, so here you have Sweden. And then here you have chili as well. Okay, so now I'm going to continue the video as if you've read this already. I'm sure you guys know the drill by now. Um, I'll say my own solution, you can say yours as well. See if you agree. Um, I would personally say that the Sweden one is a good solution. I think they're both good solutions. But I think the Swedish one is a little bit better. I mean, having farms that go vertical instead of horizontal will surely save a lot of space um, that could be used for other stuff, including housing. So um, farming takes up a lot of space because it's something that we need in our daily life, daily modern life, and to be able to grow crops and stuff. So vertical farms seems to be a great way to take things upwards instead of horizontally, if you will. Okay. 
Um, now let's take a look at exercise nine. Give it a second. Okay, so this is this is quite long, but it'll highlight the active and passive form a lot better, so you get a much better uh, exercise. Here we have the texts and eight contained highlighted examples of the active form. So everything that is blue here is highlighted in active form. We want to change these phrases to the passive form. Remember, don't just look at the blue ones. Look at the whole thing. Okay, so that it makes more sense. If it makes sense when you say it in the passive form, it goes. If it doesn't, then you should probably reassess. Do you think the active or passive? Okay. Let's start with, <clears throat> let me actually lower the zoom a little bit so you guys can get a better look. Here we have the first one. Cities cause problems. How would we change this to passive, you guys? Remember, we don't want to focus on the subject. We want to change the focus from the subject. So we'll say problems are caused by cities. Okay, problems are caused by cities, but people can find solutions. It works. B, people can find solutions. Again, we want to shift away from the subject. So we'll say solutions can be found by people. Okay. C, builders build homes. Let's take Let's go back a little bit so that we, we read the whole thing. There wasn't enough space for people to live and work, so builders built homes. Based on that, we can say homes were built by builders. Okay? Um, and offices higher and higher, and that's how they invented skyscrapers. I think this one's pretty self-explanatory. You guys got this one. This will be skyscrapers were invented by them so instead of focusing on them we'll, we'll remove this or shift the focus from the subject skyscrapers were invented by them architects are developing something similar um, now architects are developing something similar we'll say this one is pretty tricky. Something similar is being developed by architects. Okay. Something similar is being developed by architects. F, a company has designed a system. Providing enough food for everyone becomes a problem, but a company has designed a system. We'll change that to system has been designed by a company. Can't forget that part. So a system has been designed by a company. G, farmers to grow crops. Okay, let me get, let me look at it so I know what I'm talking about. The vertical farms built builds upwards instead of outwards and allows farmers to grow crops. So we'll shift from farmers to crops. So we'll say crops to be grown by farmers. And then H, they will build vertical farms. If the project is successful, they will build vertical farms. We actually very easy to use passive here. We'll say vertical farms will be built by them. Okay. So this was the first text. Now let's go to the second one. Here we have in 2003, the Chilean government awarded a property developer a difficult project. This one is a little interesting. Let's see how we're going to do this one. We'll say we'll start by changing the subject or not changing the subject, just shifting the focus. A difficult project 
was awarded uh, to a property developer. That's a T developer by the Chilean government. Remember, C is capital because it's a name. Okay, so a difficult project was awarded to a property developer by the Chilean government. The government asked the developer to build homes for a hundred squatter families in the center of the desert of a desert city. Okay. Um, we could say the developer was asked by the government. All right. Okay. The government gave the developer enough space. This one's pretty self-explanatory. We'll say enough space was given to the developer um, by the by the government. Okay. The company to build a hundred poor quality houses. Um, well, let me take a look. There was only enough money for the company to build a hundred poor quality houses. Again, don't worry, we got this. We'll say something like a hundred poor quality houses to be built by the company. This one was a little tricky. Okay. Again, we used to be built by the company offered each family. Um, each family was offered. Let me let me see this again. Therefore, the company decided on a very innovative solution. It offered each family. Um, this will not be this will not go well as a passive with the text, but for the sake of it being passive, we'll change it to each family was offered. Okay. Fitted each house. Let's take a look again. Um, it fitted each house. We'll say each house was fitted. This E should be capital. Each house was fitted, each family was offered very similar. Encourage the families. Uh, again, we're going to shift the subject. We'll say that the families were encouraged. Okay, so encourage the families, the families were encouraged. And finally, the families have sold their houses. Let's take a look. When they have the time and money, although the houses have tripled in value, none of the families have sold their houses. This will be the houses have been sold by the families. Okay, so let's go over these again quickly. So the passive for each one is problems are caused by cities. Solutions can be found by people. Homes were built by builders. They invent or sorry, <laughs> skyscrapers were invented by them. Something similar is being developed by architects. A system has been designed by a company. Crops to be grown by farmers. Vertical farms will be built by them. And that's the first part. In the second text, a difficult project was awarded to a property developer by the Chilean government. The developer was asked by the government. Enough space was given to the developer by the government. 100 poor quality houses to be built by the company. Each family was offered. Each house was fitted. The families were encouraged. And the houses have been sold by the families. All right. Awesome. So that was the active and passive. I hope this clears up any confusion that you might have. And it makes changing from active to passive and from passive to active a little bit easier. Um, okay. Uh, look at the list of topics. Okay, let's go to exercise 10. <clears throat> Here we have a list of topics. Um, or actually, never mind, write sentences about them explaining things that have happened 
are happening or will happen. Use the verbs in the box in passive. Okay, basically, in a nutshell, here we have some verbs. And we want to use these to create our own topics, something that is happening or will happen. Again, we want to talk about this in the passive. So I'll, here's what I'm going to do, I'm going to open my notepad, I'd like you to pull out your notes as well, if you haven't already. I'm going to get rid of this. And we'll take each verb one by one. Again, these are my examples, yours does not have to be the same, not even close. Okay, so write your own examples and write them in passive, and then come back to this video and compare your answers. Okay. For example, we have hospitals and then build money design. So uh, let's start with buy because the first one's already done three schools have been built in the last 10 years. So build is done. Let's go to buy for buy, I'll say two malls have been bought in the last two years. Okay. And then we have create, um, I'll say, hey, this one's going to be odd. Um, seven marketing companies have been created, uh, I don't know, in the last four years. Again, this is in the past. So something that has happened. What about or you could even say to because it, it says will happen or happening. So we'll say something like seven marketing companies will be created in the and then we can't say last obviously, because it's not in the path in the next four years. And instead of two malls already being bought, will be bought in the next two years. Okay. Um, demolished, you could say something like seven districts um, are being demolished. Seven districts are being demolished. All right, let's go to design. Um, a new city will be designed by the government. A new city will be designed by the government. Or actually here we could say by the construction workers. Okay, then we have the word give. Um, a new project is being given to the company by once more, the government. This is something that is happening. I'm trying to uh, use both will happen and something that is happening. So in the future and in the present. Okay, then we have the word move. Uh, the car will be moved by a tow truck something that will happen. Okay, then we have the word open. Um, the can this one is pretty weird. The can uh, will be opened by Sam. Okay, so who's gonna open the can that'll be Sam. And then finally, we have sell. Uh, the chair 
is being sold by the merchant. This is E. Actually, chair seems weird. We'll say something like juice. The juice is being sold. Actually, juice also. Eh. Something like fruits. The fruits are. I used R because fruits is plural. The fruits are being sold by the merchant. Okay? So these were some examples. Again, do not co copy these. Use your own and then compare answers. Okay? So. Um, do we have anything else here? No. On that note, I think we're done. This was the active and passive. This was... Um, Unit three, part two. I hope you guys had fun, learned something new, and I will see you in the next video. Goodbye.